Welcome back to MFO, everybody. You just heard that big Merc roar for the first time. And guys, a year ago, I did a video about breaking in your Merc motor. I have to tell you, I think it is the 100% the only video that you need to watch when it comes to learning how to break in your motor. We're gonna talk about that video and about the techniques and we did a little interview with Dave over at Twin Lakes Marine, not Dave Locander, but Dave, the Merc mechanic, who gave us his feedback on my break-in schedule for a Mercury Pro XS. Stick around, guys. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Mark Fisher Outdoors, everybody. I'm Mark Fisher. We are gonna be breaking in the new Merc Pro XS 250 on our new Phoenix XE. We're here down in Florida. We went over to Lake Apopka where quite honestly, it's Championship Sunday. We might happen to drive by Mark Davis who's you know, currently in the lead. But guys, what I wanted to talk about today is that break-in video that I did a year ago about breaking in the Merc 250 Pro XS. You've seen break-in videos all over the internet. YouTube has them. I'm telling you guys, the break-in video that I did, and obviously I'll leave a link to it, and the link will have the list that I use in terms of how to break in your motor. The issues that I've described when you're breaking in a motor, Mercury says that you need to go two hours of an initial break-in period. The first hour you don't exceed 35 RPM, that second hour you don't exceed 4500 RPM. But what they want you to do is they want you to go full speed every 10 minutes. So there's some secrets here guys that I'm just going to touch on and that is if you set a schedule and you break it into three minute periods, three minute increments, go 500 RPM for three minutes, 1000 RPM for another three minutes, 1500 RPM for another three minutes. That brings you to nine minutes and now you can go full speed for, for a minute. Now you go to 2000 RPM for three minutes, 2500 for three minutes, 3,000 for three minutes, and another minute of full speed. If you break it up into those three minute increments three times and then go one minute full speed, what it does is it makes it much easier for you to keep track of what you're doing. And the reason that I find that to be so important is because when it comes to checking whether or not you broke in your motor accurately or or correctly, they can go back, the, the mechanics can go back and plug your motor into a computer and see just how or whether you broke in your motor. And your warranty depends on it. Not to mention the fact that you want to do it correctly. And as I mentioned in the first episode, put, getting a new boat and breaking it in for the first two hours is extremely, there's a lot of things to distract you. Not only stuff that's just going out on the water, like the fact that Mark Davis is winning the BPT, but it's a new boat, lots of bells and whistles. You want to be in a position where you can concentrate on what you're doing. To have this schedule makes it very easy. And the reality is, if you do it on a... You, all I use is my clock and my RPM gauge. Drive for three minutes... Go up in RPM, drive for three minutes, go up in RPM, drive for three minutes, go up in RPM. One minute full throttle, hey, I'm on the 10s. It's been 10 minutes. I started at 11, at 9.30 and I'm done at 11.30. It's very easy to keep track of and it's easy to do it correctly. And now you've got the peace of mind knowing that you broke in your motor, you did it correctly, and the remaining eight hours of the quote break-in period, all you have to do after that is drive however you want, but just don't keep it at one RPM 
for longer than five minutes at a time. So you can go full speed, but after five minutes, back it off a little bit. Give it a little bit, you know, where it's not at full speed, and then crank it up and go again. You can go any RPM you want after those initial two hours. Just don't keep it at any one RPM for more than five minutes duration until you get the initial 10 hours on your motor. Guys, check out that video and check out this checklist in the description. It will absolutely help you out. By the way, that interview that I did with Dave, number one, he thinks this checklist is an absolute must. Number two, his two warnings are make sure that you don't idle too long. That's the biggest thing that he sees people do is they idle too much during their break-in period, which this checklist prevents you from doing. And number two, make sure that as you're going through your RPMs, you're keeping your trim all the way down and your tilt all the way down. Put a load on that motor and that is the way you want to do that initial two hours. Now, granted, you don't do that when you're going full speed because at that point you want to get the RPMs up to the highest maximum for that one minute full speed every 10 minutes. That's when you trim up, but then get that trim down, get that uh, jack plate down all the way and put a full load on your motor. That's the feedback from Dave. Dave's one of the best mechanics in the Midwest, quite honestly, in the country, and Twin Lakes is so fortunate to have him there. Obviously, if you need any mechanic work, Twin Lakes is the place to go to. I know guys who drive hours just to get Dave to work on, on their Mercury. Guys, I hope this information helps. Again, I'm going to put a link to last year's video so that you can check that out. And we will see you again tomorrow for another episode of Mark Fisher Outdoors. Take care, everybody.